Hey, Bass Geek here, and I'm going to show you what I think the most important settings on the Helix Gen 2 units are. Okay, so I'm not going to show you every setting in the device. I'm going to show you what I think are the most important settings, how to trim the unit down a little bit, some nice uh, little shortcuts that might help you be able to move through the unit a little quicker and get to the views that you want to see a little faster. You know, the units, the Helix units, especially the Gen 2s, have got a ton of settings in them. A ton of stuff that you can spend forever tweaking but what I like to do is really trim the views and the settings down so I can be at my most efficient and most effective when using the unit now these starter settings can be very different based on the type of lake the contours the depth the bottom makeup the structure the cover that you're going through so what I'm giving you is basically a 101 a base a starting point that i can generally use in most of the lakes that i fish most of the lakes that i go to that i can start at and kind of a range that will at least get me a good enough image that i can tweak it out as i go along so this is going to be just some starting settings for you just to get you started on whatever lake that you're on and hopefully you'll be able to tweak it out and get a little better return as uh, you get a little more accustomed to the units. For example, how every lake is different, and you kind of have to approach it based on what type of lake. A lot of the lakes that I fish, and this lake that I've been fishing this summer is a very vertical lake. You know, I'm probably 10 foot off the bank and I'm in 20 plus feet of water right here, and the bottom is made up mostly of big chunk and slate rock. So, as I'm going down a bank, you know, I'm going to get a blown out version or a faded out version. I really have to set my side imaging to be able to focus on one side or the other. Now, I will tell you that I have both uh, a 10 mega Gen 2 on my console and I have a Gen 1 9. They're both SI. And there's been some unique challenges with those particular units that I'm going to share with you right now. So guys, I do have two units on my console. I've got a Gen 1 9 SI and a Gen 2 Mega Chirp SI on my console. Now, I'm going to do this video as if all I had was the Gen 2 uh, Mega Chirp, the 10. But I do want to touch on some things that I've learned that even Hummingbird's support line couldn't actually tell me. Now, maybe they're higher up could, but they're lower wanted me to basically just uh, default the settings in my Gen 2 once I got all these networked. Uh, if you guys want to see a video on how to network these things and how I did it, uh, just you know drop a comment in the bottom. We'll talk about it later. Now, if you want to see the settings on the Gen 1 units, that video will be right here. Uh, it's got a lot of views. It's got a, a lot of good uh, good comments on it. And uh, I think it's a pretty good video. So if you've picked you up a Gen 9 or a non-mega unit or a non-chirp unit, more importantly, a non-chirp unit, go check that video out and see what you think about the settings there. Now, I'm going to spin you around here and I'm going to show you exactly what I've got. So this is the setup on my dash, guys. So this unit right here is the Helix 9. It is a Gen 1 unit. It is a Helix 9 SI. It is networked, and it does speak with my Helix 10. Now, the Helix 9, I primarily use for sonar and mapping. I did put a shoot-through hole transducer so that I got uh, readings while I was on plane with this unit. Now there's a trick guys, I will tell you this, I do not use, and the unit, the SI transducer that came with this unit is back in the box. I do not use the Gen 1 transducer. One of the reasons why is because 
you can get interference between this one and that one. Now I'm beached right now, so it looks goofy. Don't worry about that. Uh, as far as the map goes, this lake does not have a map, so I know a lot of people are going to ask me what maps I use. I actually use Navionics, but the Hummingbird units have Auto Chart Live in them. This is a map I've made of this particular lake. So the good thing is now they will hold, I don't know if it's been upgraded on these units, but I believe it's still 14 hours, which guys I'm telling you is not a lot of hours. Uh, and I'm not, not a lot of mapping time. So be sure you go out and you buy the point one card. I believe you can get them for about 89 to 99 bucks. So the biggest problem I run into when I put this new tin on was actually sharing my chirp sonar. I was really hoping that I was going to be able to, you know, at some point, even though I knew it wasn't going to be mega, you know, be able to use this as one side of side imaging and this as another side of side imaging. But you lose the chirp frequency when you share a chirp transducer to a non-chirp unit. It will turn it off. So here's what you have to do to cut it back on. So the very first thing I want to show you is you can see and you can tell when chirp is enabled. Because what you're going to have is you're going to have a range. So if we were to click over, you're going to have a range from 420 to 5. If we were to click to 800, 70, uh, 790 to 800, and if we were to click over to uh, mega, you're going to have uh, 1150 to 1275. So the very first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to you're going to want to come to your old unit, so your non-chirp unit, your Gen 1 unit. You're going to want to hit menu twice, and you're going to go over to your network settings. Now. Even though this is a SI unit, what I do to make sure that I'm getting the best picture out of my Gen 2, out of my Mega Chirp right here, is I go into Setup. I've got this one named Console. And what I do is I go into DI. I make sure I turn it off. I go into SI. And all you do is you come in here and you just uncheck these boxes. If you've hooked it up and it has disabled, and again, you won't be able to see the range. It'll give you one single frequency. What you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to hit menu twice. You're going to go into setup. You're going to go down to user mode. You're going to hit normal. You're going to change it to advanced. That's going to give you a few other things. And now you're going to come down and you're going to find chirp should be near the bottom chirp configuration you're going to push to the right and you're just going to come in here you're going to make sure you go all the way down to the bottom and you're just going to hit local chirp configuration reset you'll go ahead and push push over to the right it'll ask you if you want to you'll say yes I'm not going to do it because I've already did mine. And then just make sure you go back out. You hit exit one time after you've done it. You go back out. And to make things simple, as always, go ahead and change your user mode back to normal. So it does kind of suck that if you're mixing and matching units, you know, Gen 1s, Gen 2s, that you can't share that chirp. You know, maybe Hummingbird will come out with a... Uh, software update that will allow you to do that on the older units it would be super nice you know it may take more than just a uh, software update to do that i don't know uh, i don't know a lot even though i am a network engineer i don't know a whole lot about their um, hardware you know i haven't cracked one open a little too expensive for me to be doing that just to be honest all right so now let's get into the nitty-gritty guys we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to show you how I trimmed down my Helix Gen 2 Mega Chirp unit. And uh, like I said, if you want to check out the settings on the Gen 1s, I've got a video. You can hit that little thingamabob somewhere over in, yeah, there. Anyway, go ahead and go check that video out if you've got a uh, non-Mega unit. 
the very first thing we're going to do we're going to hit menu twice and like i told you in the last video the very first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to trim down the views and you can see i've got a lot of them hidden down through here you know i keep the ones that i really think i'm going to use and as time goes on i'll kind of go back through this and and you'll realize you're not going to use even more of these there's only one or two variations of these that you're going to use go ahead and hide them guys that way when you're sitting here and you're looking for a particular view and to do that you just hit the view button and you know you move forward so you're looking for a particular view you're not going through all of these views to find what you need now you can go backwards by hitting the exit button and it'll take you back to where you need to go now make sure you use your presets for me my presets and they kind of will change summer to winter depending on what i'm doing this is a big one i'll use during the summer because again i've got my sonar over on my other unit but if it's a standalone unit this is going to be a setting that i'm really going to use a lot on here you've got your sonar you've got your down imaging and then you can come down here you've got your sonar your down imaging and your map and one neat trick like I said, you can hit view and go forward. You can hit exit and go back. Make sure you hit these presets because you get three presets. Now, Hummingbird, on the nines, or on the nines, tens, the megas, it'd be great if you just gave us four, maybe even five of these. You know, not asking for a lot, it's buttons. Five presets would be awesome. It would help us out so much. But a good little trick, uh, you know, if you're going forward again, you can hit view. If you're going back a, view, a certain view, you can hit exit. But you can also press and hold that view button, and you get a little menu. And you can go in and look at all of your sonar. So it's a quick little shortcut. You can hit exit to go out. You can go into your chart. It's a nice little shortcut just by pressing and holding view that will come up and help you get to things a little faster. So that's what a bass is gonna look like. You can see he's coming up, chasing that ball of shad. Now, I'm gonna jump right in. I'm gonna hit menu twice. We're gonna go into sonar here, and I'm gonna show you my settings on it. Uh, I keep my surface clutter, you know, pretty low, two or one, unless it's just really, you know, crap all over the water. Uh, my switch mode on the console I will keep it on clear mode so but on, up front especially when I'm jigging when I'm vertical fishing I'm gonna keep it on max mode so I keep it on clear mode here I keep my fish ID off my fish ID sensitivity my color all that i do put my color bar on because that's basically like a flasher that tells you what you're seeing in real time and uh so i watch that a lot more than i watch kind of what's going on out here you know now so you can see what's going on now let's go ahead we'll hit menu once and we'll go in here and, and you can kind of see what we're what we're talking about now in the clear mode you know sometimes i will cut it up you know you've got sensitivity one to 20 and i'll i'll generally keep it on about a 12 on the console again that is totally different on front i run max mode i uh, don't really run jig mode that much and i'll keep the sensitivity at about a 10 up there when I've got it on max the contrast I keep pretty much at the default settings you can see kind of what happens you know 20 seems to be about right for me in the bottoms jig mode you can see I've got off chart speed I, I put it at about five I may click that down a little bit you know to a three or four depending on how quick I'm graphing everything and then me I go with uh, the number one color palette and the reason why is because that's, you know, I come from Lowrance and that's kind of a Lowrance setting. So I'm kind of used to this color palette, uh, very familiar with it, know it quite well. So now let's talk about 
the actual down and side imaging. One of the things that I'm super excited about, now the Megas, the Mega is great. Don't get me wrong. The Mega is awesome. But what makes the Mega awesome is the addition of Chirp to the Mega, to the side and down imaging. So Chirp isn't just for the sonar on these units. It's actually in the down and side imaging. And that's what I was talking to you about earlier. On the Mega units, you get a frequency range. I'll be honest with you, almost right out of the box, it makes such a big difference. Chirp makes such a big difference on these units that almost right out of the box, the settings honestly are close to perfectly set up. I mean, 90% of you guys are gonna be able to hook it up, set it up, go out on the water, and you're gonna get a damn good picture. I mean, bravo to Hummingbird. They have done a tremendous job. They have made my button pushing just with the chirp. I'm telling you, not the mega, the chirp. They have made it so much easier. There is so much less uh, time consuming and I don't tweak my unit near as much as what I used to. All right, guys, you're actually getting a bonus. You can see some fish here, ton of bait fish. There's even more out there, more bait fish, more bait fish. I mean, this is a, a ton of bait fish. But for now, let's go ahead and, and jump into our menu. So on the down imaging and the side imaging, guys, I keep it pretty much the same. You can see we keep it at the mega here. We keep it mega there, the surface clutter. You guys have really already seen these settings. Um, you can go on down. There's not a lot to this. So, you know, pretty much the same thing we talked about with the, uh, with the sonar, the 2D sonar. But like I said, we're, you know, we're just going to make sure these two are on mega chirp. All right. So now let's go ahead and let's talk about side imaging first. Okay. So guys, to change sides, so to go from one or the other, of course, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit menu, and you can see, you can go to the left, that indicates the active side, or the right, we're gonna talk about side imaging right now, and you're lucky enough to see some laydowns, some logs, there's a stick up, a lot of laydowns here. Now, a nice little shortcut, there's some shad, you can see them coming up off the bottom. A nice little shortcut here is that if you want to increase or decrease your sensitivity, you could just, while it's here, you can just press this. There's a fish right there, probably a bass hanging off the edge of that tree. But you can see, you know, as we're going down this bank, you know, we've got a steep bank here. We're 29 foot of water. You can see we're not far from the shoreline. So this, again, this, this is very steep but you can see how it blows out. Now here you can see real well the creek channel. The old creek channel got some fish hanging around there. Let's dim that up a little bit. Got some bait fish. There's some, there's another fish hanging on the creek channel. That's, that's a ledge guys. That's what you're looking for right there. So, you know, I'll even dim that down to really look here a lot. And that's something that I play with a lot. Going down the bank, you know, this is a hard, it's got a lot of rock on it. Once you get close to the to the shoreline, you can really see. So I'll really change this up a lot. You know, here you can see a log laying out here. There's a really hard bottom, something laying there, something in an X. Don't know what that is. We'll have to check that out. But let's talk about the settings now, actually here. So to get to the 2D side imaging settings, we're gonna push menu one time. And you can see, you know, I keep it at about 30. I, I want to see a little more of this than I do of that, of the down imaging sensitivity. You can tell I've got this set at about 15, but here's where it really matters. Let's go into the SI enhanced. And you'll notice guys, and this is a great point for me to start. Generally where I start is about two above contrast. So, you know, we can go down to contrast. We can, you know, light it up a little bit. But you'll find you'll get a sweet spot in here. So I'll run contrast a lot of times at about 12 to 14, and I'll run this 
at about 14, 15, 16. And like I said, a lot of times that sensitivity, you know, I'm gonna change with this. And here's something else, you see that creek channel ledge? You can see those shads sitting on the edge of that creek channel ledge. There's an old stump, a couple more right there. So, especially if I'm really paying attention to this side of the bank, I'm gonna dim it down a lot. So it'll even come down to about 11, but you can see we're still getting a really nice return, a really nice picture there. Uh, sharpness, I keep off. Contour mode, I keep off. The range, guys, it depends for me how flat an area is. And I'm gonna be the first to tell you guys, this thing, I have found fish on my side imaging and hummingbird side imaging, hands down, the best out there. I have found fish with this thing set on 95 in three foot of water when I'm over 25 foot of water. Guys, this thing is amazing. The chirp, the side imaging, it's incredible to gather the chirp and the mega. Without one, you can't have the other, I'm telling you. Uh, they go hand in hand and they work so extraordinarily well. Now that right there is either big shad or some crappy, uh, maybe some bluegill, and there's a, probably a bass down in that tree. So don't be afraid. What I try to do is really move in as much as I can, like, you know, 75 feet. You can see I'm starting to see the edge of, that's actually the shoreline right there. So what I try to do, you know, is, is really give it as wide as I can. And in deeper water, you're, you're gonna want it wider. Uh, Cause I wanna see as much as I can, guys. Like I said, I have found fish, you know, at extraordinary widths of this, but generally that 75 to 85 feet, that's, that's where I'm gonna start at. 75 to 85, you can cut it down to 65. 65 is great, maybe on the nines, maybe stay with 65 to 75, but for me, uh, 75 to 85 is where I'm going to start with, probably 75 feet. Of course, you've got both or one. Like, let's say I want to look down this particular bank right here. So I want to I want to set it to where I'm only looking at one. Now there, guys, you can see this. This is actually a grass line. See the shadows right there? There's a small, just a row of grass right there. Just right there, a small row of grass. You can see the shadows coming out. That is actually a small little row of grass right on the edge right there. So I keep it on both generally, unless I'm looking at one thing. And colors, guys, my color palette, I'm, I'm a brown guy. I'm a number four guy. Uh, I like that. Ot Defoe kind of put me on that color and it has worked for me ever since I've started using hummingbirds. So that is my settings on the DI side. Look at that big ball of shad. So the SI settings at the mega level is pretty much the same. You can see I keep my contrast on 14 and a good starting point is two above, two below on the sensitivity. And you can adjust it as you move with the plus or the minus buttons. Okay, so again, chart speed guys, I set them all on five on my console. On the bow, now that is different. I'll set them on two, three at the very most, but generally it is two to three on all the speeds on the front. And I'll also be super honest with you guys, on the front, DI is a waste of money in my opinion. Use sonar. Sonar and mapping is all you really need on the front. Uh, if you're doing the 360 scan, all you need is the Gen 2 uh, sonar GPS. GN2, all right? So guys, that's my settings for mega. Now, let's go to the 400 frequency. On the Gen 1s, the 455 was what I used most of the time. The mega is what I use here, unless I'm in super deep water or I'm covering a, an extremely vast distance on here. And it comes in handy for me, more on the side imaging, when I'm covering a wide area. Down imaging, it's always mega, unless I'm in really, really deep water. Uh, generally, it's it's gonna come out. You'd see some fish right there, guys. 
Check that out. Some good fish right there. We're actually going to waypoint those. And all you do is hit mark and exit and you're done. So that's some, some good fish We're coming in right here. So now let's go ahead and talk about our side imaging on the 400 frequency. And you can see almost immediately, everything's kind of a little more blurry. You don't have the real crisp look that you would on the uh, the Mega. You see some fish in, in there chasing shad right there. So the very first thing we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna go ahead, if I'm using this, my side image range, I mean, we're, we're gonna spread it out there wide. So again, everything in the main menu is gonna be the same. We're gonna come up here to SI Advanced. And I'm gonna take it down to about, you know, 12 or 13. And again, you know, contour is going, or contrast is gonna be, you know, just like I said, it's gonna be two above or two below. Let's go ahead and let's switch over. And we'll start talking about the down imaging now. All right, so down imaging, you can already see there's some bait fish in the bottom of a uh, lay down. And again, you'll see it's just not as, as clear of a picture. It's just a little fuzzier. But let's talk about the settings we, we have in here. So again, you know, everything's pretty much the same. You know, you can see 16 will go into a hand enhanced. And you can see again, so you can see 15 is about where we keep the contrast. We might cut it down to 14. There's a couple of fish right there hanging out in some trees. And then we'll just come up here and we'll kind of tweak it down anywhere from 12 on the sensitivity to 14, 15, even 16, depending on the depth that we're in. But like I said, you can see just a little more blurry. Now, again, guys, on the Gen 2, on the Mega Chirp units, I'm really only using my 400 frequency when I'm in really deep water. And what I mean by really deep water, for me, I'm going to start looking at it when I'm around that 35 to 40 feet of water. Again, it's real simple to change frequencies your check mark button there you just press it now we're in the 800 frequency so you can see and again I'm going to show you now the 800 frequency is again a little better than the 400 frequency but you can tell it's a little clear but it's still not quite as clear as the mega frequency We'll go ahead and talk about settings. All the main menu settings are the same. For me, I keep this frequency somewhere around the 12 on the contrast and about a 13 or 14. And again, I adjust the sensitivity as needed. Again, look at all those bait fish, guys. Look at all of them. We're almost right over top of the creek channel. You can see it right here. There's a little lay down right there. Uh, again, sharpness is off. Contour mode is off. And that's what contour mode does. It basically does away with the empty water. I just don't like that because a lot of times you can see fish suspended or swimming out here. So I keep it off. All right, so now we've moved over. We're still on the 400. We're gonna hit our check mark. There we go. And we are in the 800 frequency on the down imaging. Again, everything is pretty much the same. Sensitivity sets at about a 14. There's your creek channel, a couple of fish setting from it. You know, if you want to see them a little brighter, you tweak it in there some. But let's get down to our enhanced. And our enhanced, you can see we've got it at about 16. You know, I like it at about a 14. And then, depending on the softness or hardness of the bottom, I'm going to run it, again, basically two above or two below. And you can see really... You know, right there, there you got some fish feeding on some shad. 
I mean, it's it's pretty much perfect. Look at that huge ball of shad right there. Huge ball of shad. Pretty awesome. So that you can see this stuff. Again, guys, pretty simplistic, realistically. So guys, remember, these are just starter settings. I really wanted to show you what some bass look like on this. I wanted to show you what some uh, shad look like, what some laydowns look like, and, uh, you know, creek channels, that sort of thing. I hope this helps you guys get those settings perfect right from the get-go. I hope you find them. I hope you catch them. And if you do, definitely let me know. Let me know if this video helps you. Let me know if you've got any other questions down in the comment section. So you know what that means. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. You guys know I love to talk fishing with you, especially this stuff. Man, this is my wheelhouse. I love doing this. So any questions about your electronics, Hummingbird, uh, Lowrance, I know pretty good. I don't know a whole lot about Garmin, having ever laid hands on those, but Hummingbird and Lowrance I've used for years. Ask me in the comment section below. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring my bell to get those notifications so that you know when a new video comes out and you guys rock.